off to my right, we are looking at the potential benefits to therapy with something so-called helmet, otherwise known as parasites like tapeworms, hookworms, and so on and so forth. Now keep in mind, before we proceed, this is not a recommendation to start consuming parasites. What this research primarily looked at more than anything else was possibly taking protein-derived therapeutic elements from so-called helmets in reference to potentially treating a lot of ailments associated with aging, if not aging itself, because they found out that many of these helmets over time, off of basically Darwinian type principles, serve the symbiotic relationship more so with the evolutionary process of people and help stabilize the immune system, they're potentially just purely a parasitic role as far as making people ill. Now, this is real important because it cannot come at a more apropos time as we stand looking over the ledge of the abyss of what would I consider dysbiosian, dysbiosis, dysbiosian utopia. We're over sanitizing and basically creating a sterile environment which, looking into that abyss, will welcome these type of ailments if the theory holds true, a reference to hygiene hypothesis. Real, real vital, very important time to look at everything as a whole instead of looking at each variable in its isolated element. But to proceed as follows. Could playing host to hookworms help prevent aging? Again, we're looking at altering the terminology of parasite to symbiote as our understanding begins to evolve. However, again, two, to reiterate, looking at possibly getting protein-derived elements from these parasites to help stabilize the immune system and help, of course, also in reference to aging and age-related ailments. But to proceed. Parasitic worms could hold the key to living longer and free of chronic disease, according to a review article published today in the Open Access eLife Journal. The review looks at the growing evidence suggests that losing our old friend, helmet parasites, which used to live relatively harmless in our bodies, can cause aging associated inflammation. It is, raises the possibility that carefully controlled restorative helmet treatments, again, doesn't have to do with the parasite itself, could prevent aging and protect against diseases such as heart disease and dementia. A decline in exposure to common cell microbes and gut helmets, real important again today without adding interjecting publisher bias, how we're really creating a very, very, very clean, albeit microbe sterile environment, could play a role in future chronic disease. In developed countries, has been linked to increased prevalence of allergic and autoimmune inflammatory disorders, the so-called old friends hypothesis, according to the researcher. A further possibility is that this loss of old friend microbes and helmets increases the sterile, aging-associated inflammation known as, and the term that they're coining, inflammaging. Inflammaging is increasing increasingly thought to be a contributory factor to the major diseases of later life, including heart disease, dementia, cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, osteoporosis, age-related eye disease, and more recently, which this is a stretch in reference to correlation, a lot of mortality uh, of SARS-CoV-2, which they interjected into here, happens in areas which are considered fairly sterile. Doesn't mean the sterilization caused it, but however the, the correlation may exist, and at least in this case here, the correlation may exist to an immune system which is fairly weak because of lack of challenge from being raised in a sterile environment. Now we're gonna go right into the research while symptoms of severity are SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19 infections. We're gonna go right into the full study itself, which of course I'll have a link for you as well, because I wanna read the abstract uh, in full, because they do an ex excellent job. 
of explaining it in its entirety. And then I want to look, go a little bit into the full study itself and just take a couple of excerpts, even though I really, really recommend looking at the full study. It is just an enlightening uh, synopsis in reference to potential benefits of helmet therapy. Again, parasites, symbiote, got to balance it out. Quote, evolutionary medicine argues that disease can arise because modern conditions do not match those in which we evolved. For example, a decline in exposure to commensal microbes in gastrointestinal helmets in developed countries has been linked to increased prevalence of allergic and autoimmune inflammatory disorders, henceforth the hygiene hypothesis. Accordingly, probiotic therapies that restore old friend microbes in helmets have been explored as Darwinian treatments for these disorders. A further possibility is the loss of old friend common cells also increases the sterile aging associated inflammation known as inflammaging. Who contributes to a range of age related diseases including, I almost skipped it, cardiovascular disease, dementia, and cancer. Interestingly, as recently reported that treatment with a secreted glycoprotein from a parasitic nematode can protect against murine aging by induction of anti-inflammatory mechanisms. Here we explore the hypothesis that restorative helmet therapy would have anti-inflammaging effects. Could worm infections provide broad spectrum protection against age-related diseases? Again, an important hypothesis, and they make their argument quite clear in the full study. Now I'm going to move a little bit forward and take an excerpt from the introduction just to kind of basically what your desire to proceed forward when looking at the full research itself. While there are clearly multiple contributory factors, one determinant whose importance is becoming increasingly clear, you can hear this over and over again, inflammation, the state of Systemic, low-grade inflammation that increases with age, independent of attack by infectious pathogens. Such inflammation is a contributory factor in diverse age-related pathologies, including cardiovascular disease, dementia, cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, I'm reiterating, of course, osteoporosis, age-related macular degeneration, and perhaps, again, even symptom severity during, repeating again, but this time they, they bring it up the reference, as you see. SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 infections. To proceed forward or down. One interpretation of the cause of such dysbiotic effects utilizes the old friends hypothesis derived from the hygiene hypothesis. Hygiene, hygiene hypothesis. This argues that the human immune system evolved optimal function in a dirtier world including the presence of various microbes and helmet parasites who remove, whose removal. Again, I'm emphasizing for a particular reason, obviously being today in our modern environment, albeit increasingly sterile, whose removal leads to pathogenic immunological hyperactivity. I'm going to bring back up the potential chart real fast in reference to the helmet therapy. Again, when I say we're looking into the abyss of a dysbiosian utopia, that's what's looking back at us. Again, doesn't mean people start to get dirty necessarily, but at least to look at the argument that the researchers are making in reference to if not being exposed to parasites in a natural environment, at the very least, look at the proteins evolved in the production from these parasites that help stabilize the immune systems of humans which are not homogenous which as many politicians like no, sorry individuals like make you think that we are connected largely and have been connected from since the beginning uh in reference to evolutionary process in developing our own immune system and helping offset this which should not necessarily be natural if these are naturally prevented uh, in basically a normal environment, not sterile. But to proceed as follows. It goes without saying 
that improvements in hygiene and elimination of helminth parasites have been of incalculable benefit to humanity, but at a cost coupled to this benefit is abnormalities of immune function, according to the researcher. In the wake of success in the last century of eliminating the evil of helminths, the time now seems right to further explore their possible benefits, particularly for our aging population, strange as this may sound. Again, it takes a lot for researchers to come up and say, hey, look, you know, I know this looks good and sanitation has saved an untold number of lives, which it has. Uh, but however, though, maybe we have to look at more of uh, achieving homeostasis, some sort of balance to restore back the symbiotic relationship we had with certain elements in our natural environment uh, just so we can restore ourselves, not necessarily just for life expectancy, oh, we're really great at, at, at keeping people alive a long period of time, but to restore the number of healthy years. And by doing so indirectly, reducing a person's natural susceptibility to the many unknowns which may proceed in the future. Now again, really, really cool research. Apropos timing, I wanted to bring it to your attention. Obviously, there's nothing on something you take like three hookworms and call a person in the morning type thing, but you know what I mean. Again, being in the environment does have benefits, albeit sometimes not what we expect. But however, though, DOI citation there, follow a link for you, and uh, just read it on your own and make your own judgment or your own conclusion. It's important as we go to more of this hygienic aspect. Uh, it's even more important today than ever before behaviors start getting established, which may not be how I describe it, uh, beneficial to the future of all of us. But again, also too, as a side note, we do our data analysis on Saturday and Sunday, like last weekend, we covered the fact that they use 6.88 billion surgical masks per day. And, uh, just a sort of side note, that's how many masks get destroyed. And for those that may not be aware, again, this is what we covered over the weekend, it's just to encourage you. If our founding fathers were wearing surgical masks, disposable surgical masks, those masks would still be around today because it takes an untold number of centuries for those face coverings to degrade in the environment. Plus the fact is too, we reviewed the uh, uh, precipitous drop in infections as well as the bizarre rise in mortality and these are all things we cover on this saturday and sunday and again not to add publisher bias but at least to look at the data which is not being presented throughout the normal media again kind of a long segment i want to encourage you to go to the full study itself research it on your own just to get some good feel for it and understand where they're coming from the potential treatments to eliminating all those ailments that basically occur because of the immune system dysfunction. Again, Ralph signing off. Thank you, gratitude, and I'll see you all next time. Until then.